is not the color I thought this was. Hi, it's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up, home skillet biscuit? And happy Saturday. If you don't know what Saturday is, Saturday is when I do a little something on my channel called Bad Movies in a Beat, the series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. But obviously, I know what you're thinking, Kendall, are you also not doing your makeup in this video as well? I've already done it, you know the answer. You disappointed yourself by asking yourself that question. Here's the thing though, <laughs> doing your makeup and talking about movies and reading off a script and trying to be funny in real time is actually shockingly difficult. I make it look easy, ow. But it takes a lot of brain work. And the way that uh, my depression works sometime, it also works on my cognitive ability. So in an effort to only think about one thing at a time, I uh, therapeutically did my makeup. Another thing I did, don't judge me, just one more, just one more. It made me happy. I was stress purchasing stuff in Target. I've had a hell of a week. <laughs> I can't get into it because I'd have to explain too many moving parts to explain why this week has been so terrible. Just know dating is trash and also just people are trash. And that's all you need to know. But uh, to make myself feel better, I bought myself another Squishmallow. I've yet to name her, but I think she's a peppermint mocha. Farah. Farah the peppermint frappuccino. I don't know, I'm thinking it over, but this is the new edition. Sometimes you gotta grasp onto the joys of life. I say all that to say I've, I've returned to my respite to be, there are certain streaming sites I go to when I don't want to think about the world, I want to watch trash. And today we are returning to Tubi, so I'm very excited about that. But before we get into that, I'm gonna send it over to Admiral Kenny. Y'all know the drill, y'all know what's up. Sending it over, bop, 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 yay. Hello everyone, it's Admiral Kenny and today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. I have actually been a customer of BetterHelp for a little over two years now. It's already been that long. Originally I decided to uh, use BetterHelp because I was gonna go with traditional therapy and they looked me straight in my depressed eyes and said, can you wait four months? Not to get too morbid, but the answer was no. <laughs> so I decided to go over to BetterHelp and I was able to get matched up with a therapist in like 24 hours, 48 hours. They asked you questions about what you would like from a therapist, if there's any particular specialties that you would like. Me personally, I really prefer to have like a black woman therapist, preferably not too much older than myself. And I was able to find that and we have been inseparable ever since. That that's my girl. And I've been working with the same therapist this entire time. It's been really wild to see how therapy really helps you just think in a better and more healthy way. That's duh, that's what you go to therapy for. But wild how that has so many actual real life positive effects because life has hands, okay? But now I'm a little faster, a little smoother because uh, this past week I was like, okay, we gonna have to pull out the coping mechanism. <laughs> So I clicked very well with my therapist, but if I, for instance, didn't think that me and that therapist were working out, you could always switch your therapist for no cost. But each BetterHelp therapist has at least three years and 1,000 hours of hands-on experience. So you'll have access to a broad range of expertise that may not even be available in your area. Again, I wasn't able to see a therapist in my area for four months. Some people aren't even anywhere near therapy. So doing something like online therapy is invaluable in those situations. So something like online therapy allows people to kind of democratize their access to mental health services. So all you do is sign on, do the questionnaire, say what you need, say what you're looking for, and you're able to do secure video, phone calls, and message uh, unlimited messages with your therapist. Everything you tell your therapist is confidential and encrypted. You also have the option to do a shred button so that your text message are no longer in your account after you have a communication with your therapist if you so choose to do so. So feel free to join the 3 million people who have decided to take charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist. So if you would like to check out BetterHelp, you can get your first month for 10% off over at betterhelp.com slash Kenny JD. That's betterhelp.com slash Kenny JD. Big thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on to the debauchery. 
Oh, I just realized since you're not going to watch me do my makeup, I don't have to zoom in. <laughs> so last week we talked about Purple Hearts 2022, the, the movie that Netflix just came out with, the weird like uh, enemies to lovers, but make it conservative lib, which means it's mostly conservative. <laughs> it's a movie that encompasses some of my least favorite tropes in romance, particularly uh, falling in love with a bigot. <laughs> Y'all have done this way more times than once, which is truly unfortunate. I wish we'd stop. I thought we did. This trope y'all will not let die. I mean, if, I feel like if you're my regular audience, you already kind of know how I feel and you either agree or have left by now. And the conservatives were crying in those comments, honey. They were mad at me. Oh, um. <laughs> But if you would like to check out that video, one of my favorites actually that I've done recently, I think I'm hilarious. Um, I'm always hilarious, but sometimes I'm just on a roll, you know? Uh, you can watch that video up above or you can check it out in the Bat Movies in a Beat playlist. So like I said this week, <laughs> depression. <laughs> it's had me in its grips and I wanted to watch some trash because the last time I felt like this, unfortunately, I watched like 10 documentaries in two days, all of which basically were true crime. Don't recommend it. Sent me into a spiral soon thereafter. Made a video out of it though. So if you wanna watch that video, you can check that out up above too. It was a midweek video. But I decided instead of going down the true crime rabbit hole, which I still did, but just not as much because again, made me so depressed afterwards. <laughs> I said, let me watch some garbage from Tubi. It hasn't been that long since I've watched some hood nonsense from Tubi. If you don't know what Tubi is, it's a free streaming site. And that's where like a lot of old, but famous movies go like from the eighties, something that has like, I guess, expired licensing. I don't know how that works. They tend to be like very famous old movies, classics, if you will. And you can watch them for free with ads or it's where awful, awful, B movies go, particularly of the hood variety. What was the last Tubi movie I talked about? There was a movie that was on Tubi, but it wasn't a Tubi movie. Detroit Dreams, which was a little over a month ago. The Detroit movie where they spelled Detroit wrong like several times in it, um, which I find super hilarious because I'm from Detroit. Uh, we've had this discussion. I love to make fun of Detroit movies, particularly because of that. And today we're back with Detroit hood nonsense. Particularly though, we're returning to, I think the first Tubi movie review I've ever done. Do y'all remember? I did a video on a movie called, uh, He Played Me, the beginning of this beautiful arc in which I live where I watch trash off of Tubi and it, brings me so much sustenance. It was a horribly made and constructed Detroit masterpiece. I don't even remember what it was about. I remember it being uh, poorly written, incredibly confusing, but so messy and entertaining. God bless you. But with that said, it has come to my attention that the makers of He Played Me have actually made a sequel of sorts. A sequel in the sense that it's using some of the same actors that was in that movie. None of the, the stories themselves don't have anything to do with each other. This film is called These Men for Everybody. Keep your friends close and your enemies even closer, but sometimes it's hard to tell them apart. When disloyalty, deceit, jealousy, and betrayal infiltrate a circle of close friends, secrets are revealed, bonds are broken, lives are destroyed, Everyone is out for revenge, and the only person left to trust is yourself. Dun, dun, dun. I wanted something to numb my mind. <laughs> I could be doing drugs. <laughs> I could be doing crack cocaine. All I do is watch shitty movies and buy Squishmallows. Let me have this. The last few movies that I had seen off of Tubi weren't particularly messy enough for my liking. They were just really confusing. Mind you, this movie is truly batshit. I don't understand some of it. Like once we get to the end, you your guess is as good as mine. I'm gonna try to walk you through it, but we'll see how that goes. But I just wanted something that I knew that would be messy, entertaining, and again, something to get your mind off life sometimes. <laughs> and that is what this movie is, truly chaotic and confusing in a way that is somewhat recognizable, almost familiar, feels like home if you've seen the other movie. Uh, they're, they are quite similar, not just because of the same actors, but even the covers look the same <laughs> of the movie. So with that said, let's jump right into this movie. Let's not take a lot of time because it is a whirlwind. And of course, if you wanna check it out, it's free on Tubi, so feel free to check it out if you want. So. Without further ado, this is These Men for Everybody, 
2022. So the movie begins and we see our main character. Her name is Raven and she's in the trunk of a car at gunpoint. Okay. I did. I thought we would lead in maybe a picture of a skyline or something, but they went straight into murder. Okay, cool. They said, we know you used to like a six minute intro on one of these Tubi movies. We ain't gonna waste your time like that, bitch. Ho in a trunk. All right, let's go. She's pleading for her life. She's like, dude, you don't have to do this. And she ultimately tells the gunman that she's pregnant. But the scene ends incredibly ominously as the gunshot goes off and the screen goes black. We get actually a very important statistic in regards to violence, particularly towards black women. Honestly, I thought it would be higher than this, but apparently over 50% of black women that are killed in violent crimes are directly related to their significant other. Black women are four times more likely than any other race to be killed in retaliation for an action committed by their man, stay woke. There's nothing funny about that. I actually think that was really cool of them to put that in there. So, okay. We are sent to the beginning of the film to find out how we got here. Um, this is where we meet again, Raven and her two friends, Destiny, the girl who uh, was in like the lesbian relationship with her in the last movie. She, uh, I think she had a tan in that movie. So I almost didn't recognize her. I was like, she looks so familiar. Pretty girl. That's Destiny in this movie. And then her other friend, Jada. Um, from the jump, I didn't like Jada before she even said anything. And let me tell you why. Because I knew she was going to say some sly shit while her lace is giving her a unibrow. Like imagine trying to say a snide comment when your lace is caterpillaring across your forehead. It's right here, bitch. Looking like man dark. And my suspicions are confirmed because she starts being the messy bitch. In, well, everybody's a messy bitch in this movie, but she ends up being like the first messy bitch. And I was like, see, that's why you should keep your mouth closed. Destiny owns a salon. And while at the salon, Raven and Destiny's man come in to say hello. Raven's boyfriend is named Yoshan. He's a light skinned dude. And Destiny's boyfriend comes in, uh, the tall, dark skinned dude. Um, his name is J Money. <sighs> it's a lot of names. Anyway, okay. These men come in seemingly incredibly attentive. He comes by. Yoshan gives Raven some money just for no reason, just cause I love you. And they leave out to do whatever they do. They're buddies, by the way. They they are cool with each other. They also work together. Seemingly nothing's wrong, right? But Raven just has this feeling that she can't trust Yoshan. Uh, she feels like he might be cheating. She just doesn't have any proof, but she just feels it in her spirit, you know? The other girls, they're like, I mean, if he is still paying for everything, if he's still taking care of home, does it matter if he's cheating? Okay. Um, to each their own, but ain't, they ain't nothing a man can pay me to get on my last <laughs> nerves, dog. Like, well, in fairness, I let <laughs> get on my nerves for free, so. But I wish y'all would just call yourself polyamorous and call it a day. I did notice that old girl got her BBL for this movie. Go ahead, good for her. I see that he played me money, you know, was put to use. So we learn a little bit more about Yoshan. He does business of which we could understand as something of the illicit variety. From what I understand, he sells weed, which is funny because that's not illegal <laughs> in Michigan anymore. Oh, so, and it hasn't been for a few years. Um, so I don't really know what he's doing that's like sh so underground. Like I don't smoke, so I don't know if there's like an amount you're allowed to possess or something, but I know it's legal here. Pretty pretty much for recreational use. I don't think anyone gives a f how much you have. We see him talking with his cousin who is also a member of the business of sort, which is played by Snoop. Yeah, from The Wire. <laughs> that was, I've never seen The Wire, but I knew Snoop was in The Wire. Should I watch The Wire? I heard it was good. That was what? That was very early 2000s, no? The Wire was 2002? Idris Elba was in The Wire? Okay, Raven introduced herself to uh, Snoop and Snoop basically tells Yoshan on the way out that just because we're related doesn't mean that I don't want my money in this business that we're doing. You know, be careful because it might get a little rowdy pow pow in here or whatever. I don't know what the streets do. <laughs> Is that what they do? Pow, pow. <laughs> I don't know. Raven decides to kind of confront Yoshan about her 
anxieties around him cheating. Again, she doesn't really have any evidence of any sort. She just has this gut feeling. He hits her with the, you know, we can't have a relationship without trust. You gotta trust me, blah, 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 which is true. But also sounds like some shit that a n that is cheating would say. But she decides to believe him for the time being, at least. Like I said, Yoshan and Jay Money are in business, the weed business together. And apparently they have like some business associates that they associate with. <laughs> there seems to be some distrust between the two, but essentially they are wholesalers of the weed. Once Yoshan gets home, um, him and Raven go out to dinner and outside of the restaurant, he wants her to put his gun in her glove compartment for safekeeping of sorts. Also, he talks to her a bit about trying to convince her to move in with him and leave her apartment that she's at. Um, she says she doesn't feel comfortable doing that and that she doesn't feel particularly secure about their relationship until they are married. They go to dinner, have a good time. Once they come back, he's like, I still have business out and about, I'll be back, which is wild. Cause it's late as hell. It is nighttime. And he's like, well, you know, I'm in the super illegal weed business. So the stuff that I do can't be seen in the daylight. I'll be back rest assured but I gotta go out and do the hard crime that I do that keeps you in the life of luxury. It's weed, <laughs> but okay. But apparently the late night business that he had to do is go over Lacefront's house. Yes, Yoshan is cheating on her with Jada. Golly gee willikers, you think you know somebody. Apparently not only do they sleep together, but he also pays her rent. I'm not mad, I'm just, I just want tips. What pussy y'all got that got people paying for rent? Is my rent just too expensive or are the I date too broke? Or is my pussy not good enough? I'm 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 okay with criticism. Let me know. <laughs> Which one are we doing here, babe? All three? Give me tips. Like, what are you doing? Is it eating ass? If it's eating ass, I can't do it. If it's not eating ass, what are you doing to get him to pay rent? I need to know. So later, while driving her car, Raven gets pulled over by the police um, for some reason. They never really say why. But as she's going to reach for her license and registration, the gun comes out of the gun compartment. So the police officer is like, is like hey, 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 do you have a license for that gun she's like no i don't and so they take her in um while she's there she's questioned by an incredibly attractive man uh wow you pretty you want a mrs pretty <laughs> i'm in the area if you're in detroit <laughs> apparently they were friends as kids and he already kind of believes that she is taking the fall for someone else, probably a boyfriend or something. He's like, don't go to jail for somebody else, especially someone that's probably gonna cheat on you as soon as you go in. The moment you go in, he gonna be with somebody else. Like you could possibly be facing two years for possession if you if you go out. You gotta say whose gun it actually was. So Raven and Yoshan go to a lawyer, tell them the truth that it wasn't her gun, it was Yoshan's. And the lawyer's like, okay, look, you don't have a record. You don't have anything at all. So they're probably not gonna give you like the maximum sentence. You'll probably get at most a year. With good behavior, you'll probably be out in six months. Whereas Yoshan, who has an extensive record, could easily go in for 15 to 20. And so guess what she does? If this is love, I don't love nobody and I never will. She goes to jail for this man. She caught a case for this man. You can't even get me to eat that. <laughs> I'm just saying, if this is love, I don't think it's for me. The things that y'all really asking of women is just straight up unreasonable. I'm not doing it. She giving up her job. She was working as a model and she gives it all up. She goes to jail. Guess who comes wanting to talk to her man? Hairline. At least in this clip, she seems to have figured it out. She pushed it back. It goes back, by the way. It's like a slinky. <laughs> she comes over to Yoshan and she's like angry because apparently he's late on paying her bills. During this, we get some horrid dialogue. I'm sure I don't have to explain this to you that the acting in this movie is truly atrocious. And there's also Detroit rap music. I'm not gonna replay the same jokes that I do ever since. <laughs> Just assume that. But in a terribly acted dialogue, she's like, the reason that we're in this predicament in the first place is because I let you stash your weed in my house. 
You mean the legal weed? Like, I don't understand. What am I missing? B- weed heads? Connoisseurs? Uh... Or is it potheads? Potheads! <laughs> Last time I talked about weed, I misspoke and I was like, I've never gone to the distillery. It's the dispensary. <laughs> but like I said, I don't smoke. I don't know nothing of the devil's lettuce. I probably smoked three times. I didn't enjoy it. And the one time I had an edible actually sent me to the hospital. We're not gonna talk about that story because it's incredibly embarrassing. I was gonna be the one person that died from weed. <laughs> God, I'm so happy I don't do stories anymore. <laughs> Anywho, she stashes his weed at her house that is completely legal in Michigan. And apparently that's how they started uh, And a, Well, I don't know how that's how they started, but they started after that. Guess what? She's over the house, so they do what they do. I haven't talked much about the music that plays throughout this movie. And I will say not all of it is terrible Detroit rap. So you're not going to hear me rant about that again, at least in this video. But there were some songs that were one really good or songs like this that are so jarring and hilarious and spot on. Um, there's a incredibly low self-esteem bop that plays in the background when they have sex right here. Actually called Side Bitch by an artist named Br- Brielle Leslie. And some of the lyrics include, she may do the cooking and the cleaning, but that's my dick. Every n- needs a side bitch till he's my bitch. In my head, she don't exist till you gotta go and I'm dismissed. Now I'm pissed. Sounds like a personal problem. The song made me laugh because like some songs that they have on are just incredibly on the nose and it's so funny to me. But um, anyway, so Raven comes back after six months from jail and they throw her a homecoming party. At said party, uh, Jada casually kind of brings up that she's pregnant. Uh, Gasp. Raven is like, oh, did you, when did you get a man? Did you get a man before, while I was gone? Like, what happened? Yoshan kind of deflects by saying like, whoever your dude is, don't bring him over my house. I don't want people that I don't know over here. And Jada, as a messy bitch she is, she's like, well, actually y'all may know him. Okay. Before they can get into that, Yoshan deflects by proposing to Raven, uh, to get married. I mean, that's the least you can do. She went to jail for your ass. And she's really happy. Uh, she not bitter enough for me <laughs> personally. There, you would never hear the end of it. But well, one, I wouldn't go. I, I did that. I'm sorry, babe. Looks like this is where we part. Love you. Don't touch me though. I don't, I don't know what to say. You would just be locked up. They won't let you out. I'm locked up. Sorry to see you go out like that. But you locked up. But in this incredibly, hilariously unlikely situation where I would ever go to jail for a man, um, there's no way you would hear the end of it. Everything you ask of me is a no. No, I can't cook you shit. You were surviving those six months when I was away in jail. Baby, can you do this? You figured out how to do it when I was away in jail. But she seems just elated. She's just so, so focused on the fact that she will now be Yoshan's wife and that's the most important thing apparently. Everyone leaves the room except for Jada and in that moment Yoshan goes in and threatens her to uh, get an abortion. The next day he comes over her house with a plan B question mark. Um, I don't know if they just wanted him to hold something for the movie and not really think about it too much but I think this would be a perfect opportunity to do a little bit of sex education because the US education system fails y'all every day. First off, plan B is not an abortion pill. Let's start there. You, If you are already pregnant and use a plan B, it will not work. It will also not work if you were already ovulating. It is also significantly less effective if you are over 165 pounds. If you are over 165 but under 195, perhaps Ella would be a better choice for you. If you are over that, look into it. Or you might need to take two, I don't know. Ask your gynecologist, I guess. If you are within about a five day frame and would need emergency contraception, consider a copper IUD, which also works as emergency contraception as well as birth control. The more you know, please read. Thank you. Thank you. They trying to take your rights away. Educate yourself. Okay. Anyway, he goes in, gives her plan B and she's like, I don't wanna get rid of my baby. I'm gonna keep my baby. 
And he's like, well, why would you do that? Think about Raven. And she's like, well, you didn't think about Raven when you were fucking her best friend and he was like well i'm thinking about her now and he's like the only reason i cheat is because hoes like you make it so easy i hope he gets shot i'm sorry <laughs> well no i stand by that because he forces her to take the pill he gonna be real mad when she still had a baby because that's not how plan b works <laughs> but but i guess in this world it works like that and she actually loses the pregnancy elsewhere raven and destiny have a conversation about the past Apparently, Yoshan and Destiny had a little thing going on before Yoshan and Raven got together. I forget how Raven found out, but basically she's like, oh, why didn't you tell me that that was the case? And Raven is like, I didn't feel like there was a need to because it never went anywhere. It was just, you know, it wasn't worth bringing up, which is a red flag, very red flag, dead giveaway dead giveaway if it wasn't important why didn't you say like oh i went on a date with him but i wasn't really into him i'm happy that you guys are doing well together but no she did she hit it dead giveaway jada comes in drinking wine they're like hey aren't you pregnant she's like no i me and the baby's father have realized that we weren't ready for a kid so we decided to not go forth with it fast forward and it's time for the bachelor and bachelorette parties at the bachelorette party, Raven has like a fun drinking game night, which honestly is probably how I would want to do a bachelorette night. Like strippers, I don't want like strange packages in my face. I don't think I would be interested in that, but just like getting together, getting drunk, doing shots, telling too much of each other's business. Okay, basically every time I get together with my friends, <laughs> but like more exciting because I'm getting married. Oh, they play Never Have I Ever and it gets very messy. At some point, someone's like, never have I ever slept with a friend's man. And for some reason, Raven cuts that shit off. Ain't no way in hell I would cut that off. Keep talking. You taking a shot, what man? Who's man? But she's like, it's getting too messy in here. Let's eat pizza because y'all need to soak up the alcohol. Why did you turn the tea off right before you get married? Wild to me. That's truly wild to me. That sounds like a song. <laughs> That's wild to me. That's truly wild to me. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm off of like three hours of sleep. <laughs> and then at the bachelor's party, uh, Yoshan is cheating as we expect him to. He ends up sleeping with one of the strippers that come to his bachelor party. So right before the wedding, Yoshan is talking to J Money and he's basically like, Okay, yeah, I'm marrying Raven, but am I gonna stop cheating on her? Absolutely not. J Money's like, then why marry her? Like, why are we doing this? If you're if you're not gonna like stop fooling around on her, why are we doing this? And he's like, because she went to jail for me. That must be worth something. Miss Andrews sometimes feels like the answer. <laughs> but they get married and seemingly everything is right with the world. Elsewhere though, Jada is still being messy because she is also sleeping with Drummo, Destiny's man too. Some of y'all don't deserve friends. Some of y'all are terrible friends. That's the reason why people don't like you. You do shit like this and then wonder why you don't have no friends. Apparently the baby she had, she didn't even know if it was his or Yoshan, but I guess she ain't worrying about it too bad because she ended up smashing him in the shower. Um, and the song that plays here, very good. I have to I have to look at soapy close-ups of her booty cheeks against the glass, but I'll do it because this song kind of boppish if I do this. <laughs> Later, Jada and Raven go to the movies and while they're there, they do a very, very subtle callback to He Played Me, the first movie that I watched from them. I ain't just that movie. They've been talking about it on Instagram. It's called He Played Me. I heard it's about this lady from Detroit and it's supposed to be a true story. This looks like it's gonna be a good ass movie. Yep. While they're there, they overhear the girl in front of them kind of talking about the man that she's sleeping with right now. Um, and through a very odd and racially charged conversation, uh, they come to find out that the guy's name is Yoshan. Yo ass better not be dating no old ass Chinese, man. That's what I do know. Now, why would you think my man Chinese? Because his name is Yoshan. You do sound like he work at Yoshi Yabachi, don't you? There ends up being like a violent altercation that she has with this woman. Uh, I get it, you mad, but you just went to jail for this man. Do you wanna go back for this man again? Stop fighting over men and start stealing. I, <laughs> can I say that? <laughs> it's not stealing, they married. That's a joint bank account. <laughs> so she's like, I'm done. She goes to the house, takes her stuff and leaves, takes some of his stash money and 
packs some clothes and goes back to her old apartment that she didn't get rid of fortunately when she moved in with him and got married. So remember those business associates I vaguely mentioned them having a somewhat tumultuous relationship with Yoshan and Jaimani. So they go over to their house. This is where it gets really confusing. Somebody steals Yoshan's stash of weed. We don't see this, this is off camera, but apparently that happened. And so for some reason he goes to them thinking they had something to do with it and he shoots them, which I just feel like is a lot. You're not going to get your weed back. And now you got uh, two bodies, two bodies. That seems, and they didn't plan it very well. They just said pow, pow, pew, pew. And I'm just like, wow, that's, that's a lot. There actually, there is a part where J Money is like, you need to work on your anger issues. And now you need to work on your anger issues. <laughs> And that shit made me laugh because that's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, bro, you went off for what? There is one witness to the crime, which is one of the guy's pregnant girlfriend who saw everything. Raven ends up finding out that she's pregnant and this makes her struggle with her decision about whether or not to leave Yoshan for good. Now, this part of the movie gets incredibly confusing. I'm gonna try my best. I don't know what's going on. But for some reason, Yoshan believes that Raven also has something to do with his stash going missing. So for some reason, he sends Jay money over to her apartment and he goes there to get information theoretically, but then he tries to put a move on her. And then she's like, no, I'm married to your best friend. Leave me alone. And it gets very rapey. I don't understand. And then he puts her in the trunk of the car and shoots her. And I'm like, damn, that was, wow, that escalated a lot. Did he ask for you to do that? Why are we doing that? Apparently she dies, she hella did, gets burned beyond recognition. They could only identify her via her teeth, what was left of them. Yoshan ends up talking to Jada again, and I'm still confused about how we get here, but apparently something about this conversation makes him mad at Jay Money and makes him think that he stole his product. Girl, anyway, so there ends up being a showdown to Jay Money. He's like, where's Raven? And he's like, you didn't care about her when you were f***ing Jada. I also know that you Destiny's son's father. I was like, who? And then Destiny is the, the, the girl with the, the highlight streak, the pretty one from the old movie, yeah. Her baby is actually Yoshan's and not Jay Money's. I don't know why he just now told him that or just now said anything about it. And Yoshan was like, why didn't you say nothing? He was like, ah, I didn't. <laughs> I don't know what he actually says. I, I just started tuning out around here because it got very confusing because in comes Destiny. She hold a gun up to Jay Money and she's like, how did you even find out? Well, apparently Yoshan told Jada. Jada told Jay Money because she also f Jay Money and that's how he found out. Ghetto. <laughs> After finding out that Jay Money been cheating on her, she shoots him for his life insurance policy. I think that's right. Girl, watch the movie and you correct it. I don't know. It's just, it's all a vapor, babe. That fine ass police officer comes to uh, Yoshan and says, your wife dead. She hella dead. She might as well be ground up and turned into spam. She's just over, obliterated, dead as f um, <laughs> Sorry, it's not funny. You can't even identify her body if you wanted to. It's not there. Ashes, ashes, dust to dust. Blow her away. She gone. Sorry. So here comes Yoshan start boohoo and he's like, oh my God, I'm so depressed. Like that's my baby. And all I did was treat her wrong. And he's like, whatever will I do? Oh my God. He does what he does best. Has sex like immediately, maybe that day. <laughs> uh, he ends up meeting a girl at a bar. She says that she's uh, Raven's cousin. That didn't send you any pause. Bitch just died. <laughs> and come to find out it is not her. It is actually the girlfriend of one of the dudes that he shot earlier. Uh, the, the one that's witnessed it, the pregnant girlfriend. I couldn't sleep or eat for weeks, which caused me to lose my child. This is revenge. I couldn't eat, <laughs> so I couldn't sleep. And the stress made me lose my child. And it's not funny, the subject matter, but the way she said it made me laugh so hard. Oh my God, I could not eat. I couldn't sleep. This 
this is revenge. So she shoots him. Thank God. Somebody does. Jesus. Destiny goes to confront Jada about having sex with Jay Money. Calls her a backstabbing bitch. And then sends like a random thug to come in and kill her. So I don't know who that is. I don't know where she met this person. That was actually very unsatisfying. Yoshan's death was pretty unsatisfying too. I was like, come on, give me something. This was weak. And then... At the final twist of the movie, we find out that Destiny and the police officer were actually in cahoots. And they were also in cahoots with Raven. Oh shit, I definitely saw that coming. But they almost, they did get me though, cause they were really going on to how dead she is. I was like, ooh, she obliterated? Turn into potpourri, pottery soil, damn. I, but no, she alive. So in a very convoluted scheme, Destiny had devised a plan with the police officer on how to kill everybody and get everybody's life insurance policy. I was confused about this. Apparently she did get shot. She actually got shot, but survived. But she did lose the baby. And she was like, now it's time for a specific act of revenge. So she gets in cahoots with the police officer to trick everybody into shooting each other. It don't make any sense, but I'm gonna just say that's what it is. Uh, so that she, again, can get everybody's life insurance policy. Destiny's like, well, I'm getting J Money's life insurance. Why would you? And she's like, I'm your beneficiary. And then shoots her. She was like, how are you gonna have a baby on me and not tell me with my husband, weirdo, which is true. It is weirdo behavior in my opinion. So her and the police officer go off into the sunset, but with one final act, one final duty to take care of. Um, Raven goes over to Snoop and gives the money that she owes Snoop. And now she's in full ownership of the company. She is now a weed queen pin, if you will. And that's the end of the movie. It's terrible. That's all for today's video, everyone. If you wanna check it out, again, I'll link it down below. And don't forget to follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. If you have any bad movies that you would like me to check out, also feel free to put those down in the comment section. And I will see you guys next time.